Okay, uh, another VTOL video. Who would have guessed? I'm slacking on the glider still. Who would have guessed? Let's let's get started. I don't want to. Hardware wise, the plane that you saw in the video was the RI Wing Sequoia. It's a developmental aircraft that I've been using for f five years at this point. This is the VTOL aircraft Zuma tire again. I just woke up. This is the aircraft. It's the Sequoia, uh, and I put four motors on it. Thank you. That's the project. Yes! Leading up to this, basically what I did, I tried to decide on what dimensions I wanted to use, where I wanted to place the motors, and then I placed the rotors, you know, the sticks where the motors would go. Then I had some guests come over and I had to tend to them. Um, anyways, yeah, did a little bit of soldering, a bunch of soldering actually. Big chunk of this project was just spent putting wires in and soldering stuff, but after that I think I was ready for a test flight. The ESCs aren't really matched. And the motor, the motor arms are really, they're really flexible. So this is, you know, like it would, it would oscillate very easily. It would just be very irresponsible and very stupid to try to fly this. Anyways, let's fly. The worst part about this you see right here, I'm getting a lot of desync with the motors. The motors aren't working. The ESCs aren't driving the motors properly. So I can't even, I can't even fly. It's dumb. I'm calling it, this is dumb, this is stupid. I should have never started this project. I breathed so much solder fume for this. Do you know how, like, what, last night, Last night, I could feel the fume smoke in the back of my throat. I could feel, I could feel, and, and this is what it gives me. I, I just want to crash it, at the very least, I just want to crash it. And then what I did after this, I had some mini quad motors sitting around, and I know that they make around a kilogram of thrust per motor, and they only use six inch props. These are great, there's not a lot of vibrations. Maybe there's some vibrations, but I'm not spinning 10 inch props anymore. My motors don't weigh 50 to 70 grams. They weigh 20 grams. This is great. So I slapped the new ESCs and new motors on and let's see what happens. All the motors spin. I have my parameters all set up. Oh boy, this is gonna be exciting. Look at that. And then here's the first flight. Please don't talk to me about safety on this. We were absolutely being safe. Both of us had the safety squints going on. We felt the warm and fuzzies and sent it. This is more of a controls validation. Next test flight went out to the front porch. That also flew really well. And then after that, we took it to the front yard and that flew very well. It had great control, great response. Hey, put your hand out. No. Put your hand out. <laughs> that flies so well. <laughs> I didn't expect it to fly that well. I was honestly ready to do the transitions that night, but you know, had to wait till morning. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying right now. And you guys hear the battery warnings, right? Yep. I gotta come in and land. Uh. Okay, we're transitioning back. <laughs> I'm gonna come in and land right here. Let me, let me break it down like this. This VTOL frame and this setup is going to be the simplest way that you could get into VTOL and it's what you're going to see the most success with as well. The reason for that is it's got the mechanical simplicity of a tail sitter aircraft by means of there's no tilting rotors, there's no tilting wings, nothing mechanically complex, but it has the stability of a quadcopter where you have four motors providing hover thrust at all times and they're only providing hover thrust so transitioning into aircraft mode and out of aircraft mode you're going to have the most stability because those four those four motors are always going to be working to stabilize the aircraft and that's really why i finished this project in about three four nights or something like that i'm very proud of that fact thank you very much 
And that's basically it. I don't know if I'm ugly right now because of my hair and everything, but you know, you set up your motors software wise, go through Arduplane. They have great documentation on all of this, so you should be fine um, as long as you listen to them. Use the forms as well. The forms is a great resource that everyone should be taking advantage of. Uh, hardware wise, the plane that you saw in the video was the RI Wing Sequoia. It's a developmental aircraft that I've been using for. Five years at this point it's stable it's a robust and trusting plane it's gentle in the air and I'm talking to the college students and computer science majors out there listen you're broke you're you are dead broke if you're making projects and you can't afford to crash $200 airframes uh, this aircraft is very cheap to make and very cheap to crash uh, and it's a very good test bed to build projects on top of. Uh, but if your university has a laser cutter, I have the DXFs. They're not going to be on my website for another three months, man. I'm, I'm lazy. There's nothing else to it. But if you hit me with an email, though, I got you. I'll send you the DXFs. You can cut this out with a laser cutter and just build your projects on top of it. You know, if you want to do like a parachute drop and if you want to make your own flight controller, this is a great plane to start off of. So, um, yeah. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm going to call it right there. It's 2.30 a.m. Uh, this is Tarek. I'm going to go to sleep and slack on the high altitude glider project again. All right, you guys have a good night.